So the next question is a newborn presents with a bilateral microtia and external auditory canal atresia. The corrective surgery is usually performed at option A less than one year of age, option B five to seven years of age, option C puberty and option D adulthood. The correct answer is five to seven years of age. The corrective surgery requires two to four surgical, uh, surgical procedures. The predominant principle involves the construction of cartilag cartilaginous framework, okay, cartilaginous framework, and the projection of reconstructed pinna, okay. This is uh, usually autologous coastal cartilage is harvested and carved as the new pinna. The timing of surgery will depend upon the availability of the sufficient amount of cartilaginous tissue, right? which is uh, sufficient at 7 to 8 years of age. Okay, so 5 to 7 years of age will be the correct option to choose among the option for the corrective surgery. You can see the picture where the microtia and atresia of the external ear is corrected with the surgery and this is the 12th month post of picture after the corrective surgery the next question the strachial tube develops from option a second and third pharyngeal pouch option b first pharyngeal pouch option c second pharyngeal pouch option d third pharyngeal pouch so the correct answer is this is this was asked in pgi so multiple answers will be correct so option b and option c is to be chosen uh, from the first pharyngeal pouch along with the spoon part of second pouch that is tubo tympan crisis develops the middle ear cleft and what are included in the middle ear cleft we have to know this okay middle ear with stacking tube and mastoid ear cells these are present in the middle ear cleft okay stacking tube middle ear editus antrum and mastoid ear cells so what develops from second pharyngeal pouch? Most tonsil. Okay. From third pharyngeal pouch, inferior parathyroid and thymus. From the fourth pouch, superior parathyroid and some part of thyroid. Okay. So the next question is easy one. The following structure represents the all of the three components of the embryonic ticks. Option A, tympanic membrane, option B, retina, option C, meninges, and option D, none of the above. So the correct answer is tympanic membrane. The first cleft grows and meet the first pouch medially to form the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane is made up of three layers. Outer epithelial layer from the ectoderm, inner endothelial layer from the endoderm, and In between this is a fibrous layer from the mesoderm. Talking about retina, it develops from the neuroectoderm. Okay. Talking about meninges, uh, we know most of the part of the nervous system is developed from ectoderm. In meninges, there are pia mater, arachnoid mater, and dura mater. This pia mater and the arachnoid mater are derived from the neural crest. And dura matter is derived from the mesoderm. Okay. So correct answer is tympanic membrane. This is derived from all the three embryonic ticks. Next question: Steps develops from first arc, second arc, third arc, and the fourth arc. So the easy one. The answer is B, second arc. Next two regarding. The development of ear again this is asked from pgi 2007 so the multiple answers will be correct option a if taken tube develops from first cleft b if taken tube opens behind the level of the inferior turbinate option c pina develops from first pouch option b 
growth of the organ of 40 is completed by the fifth month of any osteocytes are adult sites at birth so let's see which are correct option a is wrong because eustachian tube develops from first and second pouch or arc okay pharyngeal arc so option a is incorrect eustachian tube opens behind the level of inferior terminal this is correct pinna develops from first pouch and second pouch we already discussed this in situ so this is incorrect and growth of the organ of what is completed by fifth month this is correct ossicles are adult sites yes mesenchymal steps are adult sites at birth this is correct so next question is coronal septum is seen in option a petrosquamous suture option b temporosquamous suture option c petromastoid suture option d protozygomatic suture the correct answer is petrosquamous suture okay so in this picture you can see the squamous and the petrous part of the temporal bone okay you can see this is the mastoid tube this is the styloid process this is the external auditory canal this is zygomatic this is sigmoid venous sinus so the coronal septum is present at the petrosquamous suture so in the theory the mastoid develops from squamous and petrous bones this persistent of petrosquamous suture this suture as a bone plate separating the superficial squamous cells from the deep petrosal cells is called the coronary septum okay this coronary septum it forms the false bottom of mastoid antrum okay first the forms the first bottom of mastoid antrum what is the surgical importance of coronary septum it it may be difficult in locating the antrum and deeper cells leading to incomplete removal of disease at mastoid mastoid ectum so to reach the mastoid antrum the coronary septum is to be removed all of the following are of the adult sites at birth except tympanic membrane ossicles tympanic cavity mastoid the correct answer is mastoid okay the tympanic membrane middle layer ossicles and tympanic cavity these are of adult size we talk about we know mastoid is incompletely developed at birth it continues to develop till 19 years of age till puberty after puberty till adulthood till 19 years of age the mastoid is developing in the process of development okay and the largest ear cell of mastoid called as the mastoid antrum is present at birth and is of almost adult configuration uh, the bony part of esc the bony part of esc right uh, the bony part of esc and the inner ear structure attain the adult size well before birth tympanic membrane also of adult sites but in the absence of bony part of esc it's horizontally placed pinna is also fully developed at birth but continues to increase till 5 years of age so tympanic membrane middle ear ossicles and inner ear structure are well developed before birth Which of the following attains adult size before birth? Again, the same question. So the correct answer is the middle ear ossicles. Okay, we already discussed tympanic membrane, middle ear, and the inner ear are fully developed and of adult size at birth. Orbital structures continue to grow after birth. 
which of the following attains the adult size before birth? Is it air ossicles? Yes, is it air ossicles? But maxilla, mastoid, parietal bone continue to grow after birth. 